taste and see that God is good. And we're so glad you're joining us for Hope today because you know what? Hope happens here in our studio, in your living room, your bedroom, wherever you're watching from in Pittsburgh and beyond. We're so glad that you're with us today here with Amy and Tom. And Tom, tell us about our guest that's coming up. Oh man, uh, you know, we know that media is powerful and we, we, know, we know that, that the visual media is so powerful and Jerry Jenkins is going to be with us. He was the author of uh, at the uh, Left Behind series, but he's also written The Chosen, Come and See. It's his son, Dallas, that is the uh, creator of the show and he's written books related to the show. We're going to talk about the show and talk about, you know, those characters in the Bible and some of their backstories. It's going to be a great conversation. I love that so much because it's one thing to read the Bible, but it's another thing to put, put that make that person real, you know, like, like you can picture them walking around town, how they think, how they navigate, how they operate. But it's so cool to think, Sydney, that really these were men and women yeah. that were just like us that met Jesus and went and followed him. I mean, just it's to stop. Crazy. It is crazy. I have to stop and think about it for a minute because I think sometimes, you know, you read the Bible and some of us are like, how could they do that? But like, oh, if you were in their shoes, you know, they didn't have their cell phones, they had no yeah. computers, they had nothing, they'd have Google, they, they had walk. Yes, they had their camels and you know, I mean it's 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 fascinating. It's really fascinating. But yeah. I'm just so grateful that we're able to lean and glean from their lives and how that Jesus impacted them. So looking forward to our conversation. And thank today. God for the chosen series. Man, yeah. thank you so much, Dallas, for writing, creating, producing and directing that, it has been a game changer. I know like in our family, we can all sit there and watch it. it it's not like a wasted time. It's a no, wonderful time. It's a hope filled time. And it's a time that draws us closer to Jesus. So it, it, it is an amazing series and uh, we're gonna have a great conversation, but I have something I wanna show you guys. I wanna show you this. You're like, here's Tom <laughs> with a coat again. As you it's may not know. Snowing. Yes. We are saving up coats. We are gathering coats for Ukraine. We're parting, partnering with Philip Cameron's ministry, Orphan's Hands, that has been working in Ukraine. They're based in the, in the Moldova right next to Ukraine. And you have the information there on your screen. We're asking you to bring coats up here to the station, Cornerstone Television, One Signal Hill Drive, Wall PA. We are gathering them for the next three weeks. And the reason I brought up this coat is a lady came up yesterday, first day uh, that we had really let this out. And she went to Gabe's, brought three parkas okay. and brought them up. And uh, thank you so much. And please, there's a miracle in your closet. So yeah. go to your closet and find some uh, coats and warm clothing that you can bring up to the station here. Well, I love it so much because I know it's like you can go to Gabe's, you can go to Marshall's, you can go anywhere and let's all be the hands and feet of Jesus. Let's Ukraine know that Pittsburgh, here in Pittsburgh, we love them so much. But right now we're going to play something that we also love. It's Stump the Host Time. Right, here we go. We have not seen these questions as you know. Here's the first one. In the parable of the prodigal son, what kind of animals did he have to look after? Camels? Yeah. Pigs. 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 It was pigs. Pigs. He was we in the pig go. pen. Yay! That's and pigs from Luke 15, 11, verse 32. So yes. Thank you, Pastor Amy. You got that how one. How awful this was for a, a Jewish audience to hear that he was taking care of pigs, yeah. too. I mean, no, we, he was this. in his father's house, and his father's servants were eating better than he was. He, the prodigals, and that's what happens when we run away from God, guys. We end up in the pig's pen in our own slop. But just come back to the Father. He's waiting. I love that. My favorite part of the scripture right there. Okay, here's number two. So again, play along. How many days had Lazarus been dead before Jesus brought him back to life? Is it three? three? Because it was like some... Uh, I thought it was four. Uh, do we call in our master guest for no, this? No, no, we're no not calling line. in our guest. Okay, no uh, lifeline. See, uh, if you guys are three. going with three. Okay, all right, three. we'll go with three. Oh, four. You were right. Uh, you said four. Yeah. I'm not going to say I was right. I'm not, no, we're... You were right. It's, <laughs> so, it's okay. We're okay with that. All right. So we're right. one out of three here. Hopefully we'll get the last one. Okay. Which disciple was a twin? Ooh. Um, was it James and John? No. No, they weren't twins. Which Andrew? disciple was a twin? I don't know. I am really drawing a blank on this Stumped. one. Boy, Dave, too. you thought we would we would do better. Can't Stumped. they make us look I'm drawing good, a blank. Andrew. I'm sorry, drawing a blank. Thomas. Thomas. 
So that's John 11 through 16. So clearly. Come on now. I mean, I know I Thomas means twin, twin, but oh my goodness, my own name. Well, let's move right along here, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> How many of you out there are a fan of the TV series The Chosen? I hope a lot of you. I, I believe that you are. Put your hand up. I know that you, you like that show. Well, I'm really excited to welcome our next guest. He has written more than 200 books, including the popular Left Behind series and the second installment of The Chosen series, which is entitled The Chosen Come and See. Jerry Jenkins is also the father of Dallas Jenkins, who is the creator and director of the TV series. Jerry joins us now to share more about his novel and to provide us with some great insight on the life of Jesus, his disciples, and their ministry. <coughs> Jerry, welcome to Hope Today. Thanks so much, Tom. Great to be with you. Well, I think that's a great place to start is about those stories. I mean, we have the scriptures. We have what the, the Bible says about Jesus and his disciples. But in the story of The Chosen, you fill in a lot of that backstory. How did, how did you go about doing that? You know, the, the, the hard work of this was really done by the script writers of, of The Chosen. Uh, usually when uh, a movie or a TV series is put on the screen, it's based on a book. Well, this one's based on the Bible, but my novels are actually based on the series. So we're kind of doing it backwards, deconstructing. And... Um, I, I agree with what you've all said about how accessible these these characters seem. Uh, I've been in, in the Bible, raised in a, in a Christian home, you know, grew up in the church, know all the Bible stories. Would have got all three of your questions right, by the way, this morning. And uh, but I, I always saw the characters, the, the disciples especially, as maybe stained glass window paintings or statues. Or I had this image of men in, in, with big gray beards marching around. And, and now when I read the Bible, I see these characters, they, these guys who are playing the parts of these, these men and, uh, and the women. And it's just been amazing to me how accessible they are because they're real people. They're, the authenticity is the, is the paramount uh, thought of, behind this show. And so that works for the, for the novel, too, to, to tell the flaws and the, the weaknesses, the inconsistencies, the sin of these people, and then how they, they were... Uh, called by Jesus, what he saw in them, and, and how they grow by getting to know him in a real way. You know, uh, I think we're going to be, I'm sure, bouncing back and forth between the, the book and the series. But as, I, as, as you know, one thing that had to be done right is getting Jesus right in, in, the, uh, in the series and in the book. And the actor, Jonathan, uh, I think it's R Romy or... or does such, mm -hmm. does such a fantastic job with the character of Jesus. What are the challenges in getting Jesus right in, in the book and in the series? Yeah, the toughest part is that Jesus would be the hardest one of all these people to identify with because he's perfect. None of us can, can identify with perfection. Uh, but so often when you see a, a movie or a, or a TV series about Jesus, uh, he's so ethereal. They get the God part right, but to me it seems they miss the man part, the human part. And I think this is the genius of Dallas and his co-writers were. Uh, they make Jesus accessible by running with the, the sense of humor that Jesus has, which is hinted at in the New Testament. You see places where somebody might ask him, well, what, what about this disciple or, the, you know, how do I compare? And Jesus says something like, well, what's it to you if I took him to heaven right now? That's a funny line. It, it's wry. And so they said, all right, he had to have a sense of humor. He had to be a guy that people wanted to be friends with. He was compassionate. He was friendly. He was, you know, jovial. And so they, they give him that sense of humor and it makes him accessible. And, and, and people say, this is the Jesus I've never considered before. Somebody that I would really love to hang with. Um, and you're right. Jonathan Rumi is just, he's the perfect character for this and uh, has done a, tr a tremendous job. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, I, I just love the way that, that humor is used in the series a lot. What is one of your favorite characters? Who do you, who do you like in the series? Well, there are several. Well, I really love the Matthew character because, um, you know, Dal one of Dallas's daughters. He has four, four kids, uh, two boys and two girls, and and one of his daughters is autistic. She's very high functioning. She's in her own grade at school. She's very active in in. Uh, 
cheerleading and dancing and that type of thing. A precious child. Um, but Dallas, you know, studied the character of Matthews and saw that he was a, a person of exactitude and, and numbers oriented and, uh, and said, what, what if we portrayed him as on the spectrum? Now, they wouldn't have known what the spectrum was in the first century. They wouldn't have called him uh, somebody with Asperger's or, or autistic. But clearly, that's what they've asked the character to portray Matthew as. And that has been really something special. And so many parents and, and so many kids who are autistic have written and said how much the, these kids identify with the Matthew character. Uh, I love the Mary Magdalene character. Uh, Liz T Tabish does such a fantastic job with that. Um, Nicodemus, uh, that's a character I think we can all identify with. We've all had our doubts and, and questions about the deity of Christ and, and you know what it's all about. Um, when I was uh, eight years old, I, was, uh, I had rheumatic fever. I was in the hospital for th about three weeks. My mother helped me memorize the entire chapter of John 3. And decades later, to see that scene of Nicodemus coming to Jesus by night come to life by something my own son created is an incredible full circle, circle moment for me and very emotional. So those are some of my favorite. I love all the characters, but uh, it's, it's hard to choose. Jerry, which character? You kind of had a picture of them in mind, who they were, how they would respond. But then the more you studied them, it kind of shocked you what you found out and discovered. Well, I think Nicodemus uh, fits that in many ways. Um, you know, I knew that he was a, a Pharisee and uh, that he was very rules oriented and, and lived by the law. Um, but he saw something in Jesus that said, you know, we know that you have to be of God because of, of what you're doing. And uh, I think what, what really came to life for me on the screen and, and uh, impacted the novel is how conflicted he he would would have been personally. Now, you know, we're imagining these backstory scenes. When we get to the scenes that are actually from the Bible, we want to mirror those about as exactly as we can because uh, we we want to do justice to the to the Scripture. People who have only heard about the Chosen, they hear that it's a Jesus production, and they think, well, is it going to be the typical Jesus, you know, che cheesy sort of. Uh, church basement video type thing we often see, uh, or if it is done well production-wise, is it still going to, you know, have these people walking on air? And uh, I think this authenticity is what makes it happen. And, and to see Nicodemus struggling with his own decisions, and and the idea that Jesus probably would have called him too, and said, you know, asked him to leave his his life and follow him. Uh, imagine the conflict for somebody who's who's a uh, a big deal in the Sanhedrin in Jerusalem, even considering giving up that life to, to follow Jesus. It's, a, it's an amazing story. Jerry, you know, we all love so much the authenticity of the chosen. I just want to ask you, you know, about your creative process of what do you have to do, like, before preparing to write? What does that look like so you can get right in line writing these character stories out? <laughs> Yeah, I, I tend to, you know, I don't want to over-spiritualize this, but I do tend to, to just have to pray and, and pray that I'll get out of the way uh, and that the, the content that the Lord wants. I mean, I, I never claim, and neither does Dallas, that anything we write uh, is, is, you know, Holy Spirit breathed the way Scripture is. Um, but we do want to be vessels, and we do want to, to do justice to this story. Uh, we're lovers of the Bible, lovers of Jesus, lovers of the church. And so we don't want people to substitute this for the church or for their, or their own Bible reading. We want it to, to, to draw them back to, their, to the scripture, back to church. And, uh, and so that's my prayer as I write every day is that just uh, I would stay out of the way. Uh, I would let the, the content be king and, and let the spirit uh, speak through me. You know, Jerry, uh, our, our failure in the questions today notwithstanding, I think I know the, the Gospels pretty well. And then I'm watching The Chosen and I'm like uh, with my wife and we're, we're seeing this architect character. And we're like, who is this guy? Who is this? And it's Nathaniel. Where did, where did the inspiration come for building a backstory like that for Nathaniel? You know, I think that one really did come directly from Dallas. Um, you know, you, you may know the story behind The Chosen is that Dallas uh, had a, a failure in Hollywood. Uh, I helped him get started in his career 
back when he got out of college and he was in Hollywood for about 10 years and making feature films. And uh, he had one that, that a studio thought was going to be great. It tested well. Uh, we all thought it was, I thought it was the best thing he'd ever done and that it was going to be a, a big hit. And it just bombed in the box office the first weekend. And he was devastated. And uh, he had that experience that Nathaniel has in, in The Chosen. Uh, he didn't sit under a fig tree, but he sat in his living room late at night. And he was basically saying, I did this for you, God. Do, do you not see me? What, what did I do wrong? What, you know, what am I supposed to do? And, uh, and so that, that's really the germ of the, of the Nathaniel character. When Nathaniel says to, to Jesus, you know, how did you know me? Because when Jesus sees him, he says, here's a man of Israel without deceit. And uh, Nathaniel believes he's that, that person too. And he says, how, how do you know who I am? And he says, I saw you under the fig tree before uh, Philip even asked you to come and see me. And, uh, and that's how, G how Dallas felt that night too. Uh, his wife said, you know, she was led to the, to the feeding of the 5,000 and, and that, uh, you know, truth that uh, it's not our job to do the miracles. It's not our job to feed the 5,000. It's our job to bring our loaves and fish. And uh, Dallas was several hours into agonizing over all that. His wife had gone to bed and somebody that he didn't even know personally, but had corresponded with from an, another part of the world in the wee hours of the morning, emailed him and said the same thing his wife had said to him. It's not your job to feed the 5,000. It's your job to bring the loaves and fish. Yeah. And so that's where Dallas felt like God did see him. And he said he, he, he's never been the same since. And, uh, and that, that's, that was the germ of the story of Nathaniel. Now, where they came up with the idea of the, being, being an architect, um, that's the creative process that, that I find fascinating and, and uh, admire in other writers as well. And uh, Dallas and his co-writers have really built great backstories for these people. People say, where is that in the Bible? Well, it's, it's not. But the story of what Jesus said to, to Nathaniel, what Nathaniel said to him is clearly there. And so they, we just imagine these stories, and I think people give us artistic license to say, that's the way it could have happened. That's amazing. Is it true, Jerry, that you met Stephen King, and did he really read some of your books? And what was that moment like? It was really bizarre. We, we had the same uh, audio reader, uh, one of the best in the business. His name was Frank Muller. And uh, he won all the audio awards and everybody in the business knew Frank was the best. Well, he had a terrible motorcycle accident several years ago and was so had such severe brain damage, he could barely speak, let alone ever read books again. And uh, this was during the heyday of Left Behind. And so I had some means and I was sending uh, some money to a foundation that was helping with his care. His care was in the millions because he was in rehab and, and uh, he had a young family and and uh, one day I'm sitting right where I'm sitting right now. And my, my secretary buzzed me and she said, Stephen King is on the phone for you. And I, <laughs> I thought, you know, this has got to be a brother of mine or a friend of mine, you know. And so I, I almost picked up the phone and said, yeah, this is John Grisham, you know. But uh, I thought, well, just in case it really is him, I just said, this is Jerry. And uh, he said, yeah, this is Steve King. And I thought, only Stephen King would call himself Steve. <laughs> And he said, you, you may not know this, but I'm behind the fund you've been sending to. I used a different name because I didn't want people to, to give because it was me. But he said, you and I are the only ones who are really giving to this in, in any you know, real substantial fashion. And uh, he said, we should go visit Frank and rehab and, and do a benefit for him and that type of thing. And so we chatted a little bit. And I, and I said, well, this may come as a surprise to you, but I, I'm a reader of yours. And I said, I don't read the worst of the, you know, demonic or the graphic stuff that you enjoy writing, but like the Green Mile and Misery and some of those I really have enjoyed. And he said, well, this may come as a surprise to you, but I'm a reader of yours. And that just about knocked me off my wow. chair. And uh, he said he, he had read Left Behind because Frank Muller had sent it to him, told him he was doing that. And, uh, and he said he'd read my baseball novel. Stephen is also a baseball fan. So we kind of hit it off and, and have kept up over the years. And Writer's Digest even did a cover story on us, referring to us as sort of strange bedfellows, the horror writer and the Christian writer who you know, kind of keep up with each other. And we did visit uh, uh, Frank in, in rehab, and, and uh, it was a really special day. That's a great story, a unique connection. But that kind of brings me to my next point. And just the final thing I want to ask you here, Jerry, is 
where's the, what's the spiritual connection you're hoping for and Dallas is hoping for with the series and with the book? What, what, are, what are you hoping that the Holy Spirit does in someone's life? You know, really the bottom line of The Chosen is the fact that we believe that people who see the show or read the novels are also chosen. They're chosen to follow Jesus. And we want people to see Jesus in a new way. Uh, whether they've ever been initiated, whether they've been church people or not, believers or not, we want them to, to see Jesus for who he is because he changes us from who we were to who we are now. And it's all because of him. And uh, that's the goal. Some, you know, if, there, if there are critics to this, people say, well, you shouldn't substitute it for, for the Bible or for church. That's the last thing on our minds. Our whole goal is to get people to see Jesus in a fresh way and, and to, uh, to be changed by him. Amen. The book is called The Chosen, Come and See, which is what was said to Nathaniel, to come and see. And uh, it's something great, the series and the book, fantastic. Uh, Jerry, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Tom. Good to be with you and Amy and Cindy. Thanks. Well, uh, again, I would encourage anyone to watch the series. It is life-changing. Read the book. It, it just uh, brings it home even more. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. and when, we, when we're back, we'll have scripture and some time of ministry for you. How can I know God's will for me? It's a question that haunts us all at times. When we're looking for the right job, thinking about moving to a new city, or deciding whether or not to get married. We long for God's direction and His warm reassurance that we're heading the right way. A Cloud by Day, a Fire by Night captures A.W. Tozer's teaching on the will of God. Inspired by the story of God leading His people out of Egypt and into the Promised Land, Tozer's wisdom and biblical insight will help guide you in decisions of your own you can be reassured of God's presence every step of the way. Request your copy of A Cloud by Day, A Fire by Night with your best gift to support Christian television through Cornerstone TV. Call us at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for your partnership. Three things that I love, a great TV series like The Chosen, you should watch it. I love to read books. I love historical fiction and I love the Word of God. Let's go right now into the scripture. Now, this is a long one. You're gonna wanna buckle your seatbelt, but it's good. John 1, verse 45 through 49. Philip went to look for Nathanael and told him, we have found the very person that Moses and the prophets wrote about. His name is Jesus the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nazareth, exclaimed Nathanael. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Well, come and see for yourself, Philip replied. And as they approached, Jesus said, now here is a genuine son of Israel, a man of complete integrity. How do you know about me? Nathanael asked, and Jesus asked, replied, I could see you under the fig tree before Philip found you. Then Nathanael exclaimed, Rabbi, you are the son of God, the king of Israel. Isn't that beautiful? I got the chills. <laughs> Seriously, I get the chills just thinking about that interaction. I, I love that. And I, I love the come and see aspect of it. You know, that it's Jesus is always about us going and getting one more to come and see who he is. Sid. You know, just as we were like reading this, I know that that part come and see like for yourself. And I just feel like, you know, one thing I think about, I actually had like received a word years ago, but there's a time where I think, you know, you grow up in the church or you go with your family and things, but then there comes a point when you got to find who he is to you. Yes. Not what your mom said, not what your dad said, not what your grandmama said, but what he has revealed himself to you. And that is the most beautiful place to see. I remember in my life when I was able to come and see Jesus, I remember it was when I was like 26 and I was just having these moments where it just became so tangible and so real and the Holy Spirit started revealing the scriptures I was reading in a whole new way. I love that, you know, with Jesus, it's not just about a relationship with him, but it's also the revelation of understanding, you know, when 
when you, we go from glory to glory, when you spend time in his word, when you hear these stories, they come alive in your spirit, Amy, and you're not the same. There's so much life change. So I love that we're able to go and see Jesus every day. And then Jesus says to him, I could see you under the fig tree. And I just want you to know today that Jesus sees you. He sees you in your home. He sees you in your bedroom. He sees you in your car when you just dropped your kids off to school and you've got a lot of things weighing on your mind and your heart. Jesus sees you. He hears you. He knows you. He loves you. And he's real. We're not talking about some fictional character. We're talking about the son of God, the king of Israel, the, the one who's going to return for us one day. We're talking about a real father who loves us passionately. So today, just know that he sees you and don't run away from him. Run straight to him. You know, uh, as we're talking about this, I'm thinking that you know about Jesus. You know Jesus maybe. But the whole thing we're sharing tonight, today is about what is that new thing that God wants to reveal to you? Look, look at, look at uh, Nathaniel. He didn't want to think that anybody from Nazareth could have anything to tell him. And he didn't know where to go with God at, at this moment in his life. But his friend, Philip, came and, and brought him to Jesus to see something new, to see God presented in a new way, God incarnate, God with flesh on. And it was a life-changing, history-changing moment for Nathaniel and for me and you. So what new way does God want to reveal himself to you today? Maybe it's through watching The Chosen. Maybe, and I'm sure it is, through getting a portion of scripture and letting him change what's on the inside. He wants to do that for you today. And you know, it's just so great. I love that. One thing I've just, I've just been thinking about, you know, is the changing of the seasons and different things are happening that we get to every day sit with Jesus and just listen to him. There is no other God that you can do that. There's no other God that's gonna see you under the fig tree or maybe it's over the oak tree or whatever trees in front of your house or wherever you may be. But just today, take that moment and just spend time with him, listen to him, be silent before him, be still and know that he is God because there's things that he wants to speak to you and just he wants to be intimately spend time with you. It is the greatest hope that we have. It's truly with him and we love you and have a great day. On tomorrow's Hope Today, it's time to rise up and take a stand for truth in these troubled times. Pastor and author Robert J. Pacienza is calling on Christians to live out a public faith, bringing the mind of Christ into every cultural sphere. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.